Let's talk, talk. Let's talk Parsi. All right then. Hey everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us again. I think we're ready to get started. Uh, today I'm joined by Emilius from the BD team, who I think most of you probably know already. And we've also got a special guest today, Alexandra, who is the founder and CEO of Frilled Labs. And their team is launching a brand new web free platform very soon. So she's joining us today to tell us a little bit more about this. Welcome, guys. How are you both doing? Yeah, hey, guys. Good to be here again. Um, having a good day, to be honest. Uh, excited to talk to you again and uh, looking forward to having a nice casual chat with you, Dave, Alexandra, and, and, and obviously the community. Yes, me too, actually. Hi, guys, and hi, everyone. Thanks for, uh, for joining us. Uh, I'm also super thrilled, so to say, to be here. Uh, I'm based in Florence, Italy. This room where I'm currently at is super warm, so I really hope that the ventilator in the background doesn't bother you. But yeah, I'm super happy to be here, and uh, thank you so much for the kind invitation. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah, we, we can't hear it at all. You sound fine, so don't worry about that. Uh, yeah, it, it's nice to have a verb as your project name, right? I think that opens up a lot of opportunities. <laughs> Great, thanks. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's been, well, it's been a rough few weeks in the markets, I think, a rough couple of weeks, so hopefully we can just have something positive to think about. A little bit of recovery today, but uh, we've got a little bit of a shorter space today because I know you're a busy lady, Alexandra, so I'll just dive right into the questions if that's all right with you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. It's um, There was indeed uh, something planned afterwards, and uh, I think already like we half an hour or so we can uh, cover plenty of things. So yeah, let's uh, let's get started. I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely. So Thrilled is described as a web free synergy machine. So, so I just wanted to ask for anyone who's listening who might not be familiar with what you guys are doing already, would you just be able to give us like a brief overview of how your platform works, what it's intended to do, and where it fits into Web3 in general? Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for the question. You know, I think... I don't want to start off with a huge bummer, but if you say Web3 Synergy Machine, it almost makes it sound like um, the platform that we're currently building, right, is a Web3 native solution. And I do have to immediately tell everyone in the audience that we are more like Web2.5, as I would like to say so. Perhaps we could get to a point later where we discuss whether or not that is a problem. I don't think it's per se an issue. But fundamentally, yes, what means that we are building kind of like the synergy machine, as I like to call it for Web3, is that we're kind of building an open access and free business solution, right? For basically the builders, the funders, and the contributors to the Web3 space. And what that really means is if you really want to get an ID as rapidly as possible, you can kind of like imagine what Tinder did for love. Uh, I think that we are going to do that for synergies in the Web3 space. That's something quite tangible, I would say intuitive, as to how Thrilled Labs platform will work. We're going to launch in just a couple of weeks. And basically what the platform allows is Web3 projects. So people working for Web3 projects, right? Uh, developers, um, professional investors, and Web3 service providers. So imagine um, a freelance, a specialized lawyer in Web3 or a PR firm even, to find each other globally in a tailored manner. Um, that's really what we're doing. How it fits in the Web3 space? Mm, I would say that I really hope to bring together everyone in the Web3 space, right? Of course, we already know to find each other like super well. We go to conference, we're in a Telegram groups together, right? There is... Um, I don't know, lots of great op like opportunities and communities on Discord, on Twitter, and so on. But as far as business is concerned, right, where people are really finding each other for business opportunities, so for jobs, for collaborations, for B2B synergies, for funding, I see a lot of fragmentation and a lot of opportunities lost. And yeah, I think that is kind of... An like, like, yeah, an opportunity uh, being missed out on. So I thought, what if we can bring everyone together in an ethical, open access, and also capitalist kind of way? Uh, and that's fundamentally what Thrilled is all about. Yeah, I hope that was clear enough for you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the answer. Yeah, it's... Uh, I think when you talk about 
like you you call yourself a, a web 2.5 for example solution so just to clarify you're saying that uh, obviously you're not on chain yourself so you you can't say you're decentralized etc but you are a web 2.0 solution that is targeting web 3 projects mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. um which i think there's, there's a huge gap for at the moment um there's a number of web free project aggregators out there like um for example magic square dap radar who ain't a collate these different projects like to highlight them to a retail audience like b2c so would it be fair to say that what thrills aiming to achieve is perhaps something similar but with like a b2b focus rather than a b2c one highlighting projects for vcs angels accelerators private investors rather than retail token investors yeah i would say so that is a really clear cut and i would say accurate observation i do have to say that that is also, like if we see Thrilled kind of as a platform that allows Web3 projects, right, to connect with investors, that was initially what I kind of envisioned for the platform, right? So Web3 connecting, uh, Web3 projects connecting with angels, PCs, and so on, uh, but fundamentally also with one another, right, for partnerships, for collaborations, and so on. I was previously working for a wonderful uh, Web3 uh, company called Bradom. And it was fundamentally there that I saw a lot of opportunities being missed out on and a lot of um, fundamentally time being lost, right, in our business efforts. And with regards more to your question, yes, I would say that we're fundamentally more focused B2B, if you can even call it like that, right? I, I know lots of projects out there have a little bit of a more, uh, yeah, loose uh, legal incorporation in that regard. And I think as a lawyer, that is absolutely wonderful and that shows where we're going as a society, um, but I don't want to exclude actually individuals from joining Thrilled. As I said, we had a kind of a bit of a, an older vision, but I do reckon that, especially as you said, right, the markets are under pressure. Uh, the markets have been extremely under pressure, even not only with things happening in terms of, you know, the market demand for tokens and so on, but we have seen also so many incoming pressures from legacy institutions, from incumbents, right? That were putting new laws, that were putting new regulations. And I think that really now is the time that we as a, or you, <laughs> depends where I position myself and our company, as a Web3 uh, movement worldwide, that we start to find each other as well as possible, as rapidly as possible, and as streamlined and as fair as possible as well. Hence, I really don't want to exclude that also individuals such as freelancers, such as people wanting to join new Web3 projects, right? People who are willing to tap their feet into new jobs that they can also um, actually find one another as long as there is like a mutual interest. That's the most important in that regard. And then together, the idea is we can really, yeah, flourish and blossom. And uh, again, this is all free and open access. We don't take commissions. Uh, that is very important to mention here as well, immediately, of course. Yeah, I think a common point across Web3 is that um, there's a huge amount of opportunity, but an equally huge number of roadblocks in place just to general adoption. So any solutions that can aim to streamline things are pretty valuable. Just since you mentioned um, involving individuals, etc. as well, I wanted to ask you, I did a little bit of research ahead of um, talking to you today and... I noticed you'd mentioned before that you had plans potentially to involve or say to expand Frilled just beyond, say, investment, B2B use cases, and maybe even involve likes of web free influencers, um, marketing agencies, individuals, maybe even people looking for jobs in web free. Sounds a little bit like um, maybe like a web free LinkedIn for example, is, is that the sort of thing you're going for? Um, how would What would your vision for the future version of Thrilled look oh, like? Oh, that is a lovely question. Uh, I've been asked this before, actually. Are you like kind of a link in for Web3? And whilst I understand the idea of, because, I mean, let's be honest, if you hear it um, for the first time, it seems a little bit all over the place, right? So I would really like to reiterate that I think what we're bringing together are the funders, the builders, and the contributors, right, to Web3. Um, if we are like a LinkedIn, I would really say no, 
uh, LinkedIn fundamentally functions as a kind of like a central repository of information. And it's actually on LinkedIn that a lot of business is being done, a lot of outreach is being done, and it's all over the place. In fact, LinkedIn, um, you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes, you know, your inbox is just being spammed sometimes with lovely people with less uh, useful opportunities in that way. And I really actually don't want to function in that way. I want Thrill to really function almost as a Tinder. So basically what you do as an investor, as someone, you know, the CEO of a, I don't know, Web3 project raising or looking for partnerships, maybe as a freelance lawyer or even as a dev looking for a new gig. What I want you to do ideally is actually just provide some information about yourself, whatever you wish to share. Um, in that regard, we don't have like huge requirements, right? We don't like mm, want you to upload your data room. You have to share whatever you're comfortable with. Then you fundamentally seek and select what, what you are looking for. With whom do you want to connect? In which geographies do you want to connect? For which type of opportunities are you looking? Partnerships, funding. Maybe you're looking for a Web3 project. I don't know, in uh, Scotland. Well, soon you'll be able to find exactly that. Um, maybe even a Web3 project in Scotland that is focused on infrastructure or ReFi or DeFi 2.0. Whatever it really is, I really want you to find opportunities more in a streamlined manner because that really saves you time and that is fundamentally and then i will stop this monologue right that is fundamentally one of the things that bothered me most right instead of building really really often we're spending so much time connecting with people jumping on calls with people that are lovely but then it turns out there is no synergy or there is a mismatch in our interest and all that time we're not building right and we are using our funds actually that we, you know, even if we're funded as a project. So, yeah, I really just hope that um, we can solve that in a way or at least, um, yeah, create a more level playing field because, and actually that is the last thing I will say, this is happening for people who are, you know, having access to the right people or that are having um, connections already that are jumping on calls, even if there's a mismatch and so on. But there's also great people working in this space or trying to create a project by themselves or wanting to join this space in terms of work that miss completely um, the right connections. That was in my case also the case like two years ago. I didn't know anyone in Web3 and I had no clue how to onboard the, the sector, even though I, th I, I thought I could contribute. So also for those people, thrill should be there. Um, and yeah, people should find new opportunities, I believe. And Web3 is all about inclusion, right? And open access. So I really hope to help everyone like globally. That's really the idea of our platform. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, it's quite funny. I've, when I watched the, I found a YouTube video you did, I think, talking about for a lapse when I was <laughs> researching um, your project and you were talking about swiping for a different um, project you wanted and it immediately made me think of Tinder. I almost asked that question. Um, so it's interesting that you would describe it that way. It's, uh, it's supposed to be quite an apt comparison. I've, I've got no criticism. I, I met my wife through Tinder. Oh. So that, uh, that's, that's quite an apt comparison for me. But yeah, I, I guess that's how it works. Just trying to match up appropriate projects, appropriate investors, appropriate anyone that's interested sort of within the space. Makes sense. Um, as someone working in like web free community, I can certainly see the appeal of a platform like that. Um, web free communication can definitely be a little tricky at times. Um, you guys both probably have more experience than me when it comes to like the private investment world. But as someone working from the community side, I get contacted by like quite a lot of potential private investors, and it's generally already it's it's a tricky process because. I think in this space you've just got you've got a lot of bad actors, right? You've got people who are not who they say they are, which I think is why like warm intros are the standard at the moment. And it sounds like maybe this is a platform that could bridge that gap between like warm intros and cold intros. Um, I just before we go on, I just want to ask you a little about about your own background. Um, so as far as I know, you come from like a legal background. I think you said you've also got some experience in like um, the hospitality sector um, would you just be able to tell us a little bit more how did you first become involved in web3 what what drew you to it originally oh yes thank you and by the way congrats on finding your your wife on dinner that is actually really cool 
Um, that is also kind of like what happened with me, how I came to Italy, but that is a completely different story. But at least we both appreciate the idea of right, finding people globally, again, in kind of like a streamlined and consensual manner. Uh, having said that, to your question, uh, thanks for that. Uh, yeah, so about me, I'm Dutch. As you've heard, I'm not a wonderful, brilliant native speaker such as yourself, unfortunately. Um, I live in Italy since approximately uh, eight, nine years now. Came here initially to study. I had huge study ambitions, uh, kind of like a nerd uh, by nature, and I even wanted to join academia, right? So either in law, uh, got a law degree. Uh, or in political science, got another two in political science. Um, and you might wonder why. Mm, it was because as I'm looking back now, I really wanted to join the legacy institution. So indeed, either in academia or as a lawyer, maybe, uh, or as a politician, either nationally or European, because I had like all this kind of like ideals and thoughts about how we could shape society for what is, in my opinion, the better. And over time, I really realized that it was actually Web3 and technology um, that allows for that, especially uh, as I became involved with crypto from 2017, right? Started to trade a little bit, hoping to uh, gather some uh, yeah, fiat to pay off my study debt. Um, now I got more and more interested and really realized it was Web3 that I wanted to join. So, yeah, I, I managed to actually, you know, um, work for a wonderful um, Web3 project, as I mentioned, called Radom Network. Uh, in the meantime, perhaps of interest to say is indeed, um, I'm not from like a super rich background or anything. I'm the first person in my family to even go to university. So that kind of practically meant that I always had to work while studying. Uh, not the end of the world. Uh, it was sometimes tough, right? Especially being a bartender and later an entrepreneur in the bar and restaurants uh, as well here in Italy and in the Netherlands. But it also taught me really a lot about, um, yeah, kind of like, I would say, how to work really hard and be determined. Um, so that is a little bit more about my background. Um, for the rest, I really love football. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just really working really hard right now to get this platform um, in the App Store uh, by September 10th. Um, yeah, happy to provide more information, but I, I, it needs to be relevant as well, right? Before you start talking about yourself and everyone drops off. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Um, well, I, I certainly wouldn't put yourself down when it comes to your English because I'm uh, for anyone who's familiar with the UK, I'm from Newcastle, uh, majority, so I'm uh, I'm barely considered a native English speaker <laughs> myself. So you're, you're probably closer than I am. Yeah, so it sounds like you've certainly got a lot of varied world, real world experience outside of Web three. I think it's one of the interesting things about working in this industry. Um, I came from like an engineering background myself, and over the years, I've just met people from like every imaginable career background like medical law enforcement legal as well as obviously like software development yeah. uh Amelius, while we've got you i just wanted to ask you a question as well how did you first connect with thrilled um so you've probably got more insight than i do into like private investment vcs angels etc um what are your thoughts about what they're building do you, can you see the advantage from like a BD perspective? Oh yeah, for sure. So you know, to answer the first part of your question, I think the first time we actually met with Alexandra was um, last year in Barcelona. I think it was. It was the Avalanche Summit One um, in Spain, and then she was still part of the Radom team. So you know, we just um, you know got together, took a few pictures, uh, hung out for a while with you know both teams, and then. Um, this, for the second time, I think we met in Berlin. Was it was it early this year, or last year? I can't really recall, but you know, a connection that was made in one of the conferences, and you know, that's why I think it, it just goes to show why uh, what Alexander is building is important in Web three. Because yes, to answer the second part of the question, I do feel like uh, there's a huge fragmentation going on. Um, as somebody who I was lucky enough to attend quite a few crypto conferences already. I can tell that, you know, there's no streamlined way of people connecting with each other. A lot of the times you are getting different apps that, you know, are built for each and every conference. So the end result is your phone is packed with different apps that you probably are not going to use at least for one year. And then the Telegram chats, obviously, are always full. They're always 
very busy, lots of noise in there. So it's really hard to find the people you want to talk to or you want to meet. So by having uh, a one a one app that you can you know use and reuse and always find uh, an easy to way uh, you know source to, to meet people outside of Telegram, your existing contacts. That, that that's that's really something that you know I think the industry is lacking, and I that's why I do believe why uh, you know Thrill has a good chance to become the the go to app every crypto conference attendee is going to use. So. Yes, this is needed. Um, like I said, I can feel it firsthand, and uh, you know, I, I really you know wish wish Alexandra all the best with what she's doing because uh, you know it takes courage to actually step out of your comfort zone and, and start building something, especially coming from the background that Alexandra has shared. You know, trying to upgrade you know the the path of, of not only yourself but your family as well uh, to reach new heights to to you know advance and evolutionize so yeah uh, i do believe this is this is something that alexander can do that with so yeah just a few thoughts here yeah i think it, like maybe it's why crypto conferences are so so frequent as it is because there's like we we attend conferences as well i say we you do amelius not so much me but uh, you guys in the bd team do a lot of hard work at various different crypto events because I think it's one of the only ways you can reliably just talk to other projects and get decent intros and know that everyone you're meeting is someone who's genuine and has genuine intentions, you know, rather than just trying to wade through the massive sea of various bad actors. And we all know the kind of um, contacts you get on Telegram, on Discord, on Twitter, everywhere like that. Um, but I just wanted to ask you, Alexandra, how did the idea for the platform come about? What what prompted it in the first place? Obviously, you said you you came from um, you working in this, like background hospitality, so this was quite a departure from you. What inspired you to take this up in the first place as a project? Uh, thank you for the wonderful question. Also, thank you, Emil, actually for the for the very kind words and. Uh, I think that it is important to immediately mention in case anyone is like perhaps confused because mm, fundamentally um, Thrill can function also as an event networking solution. That is not necessarily properly our core offering, but due to the features that we have, people can actually share their location in, again, an ethical manner. We don't do anything with that apart from suggesting potential synergies as we call them of people that are close to you uh, so in that way basically we don't only allow for like global networking or networking with people in specific continents or countries but also really on the ground so if you go to a conference or if you're going to a new city or you're going on holiday on bali tomorrow and you want to figure out who is close to you right you can use thrilled for that which i think is pretty nice especially um, again, it also came a bit from my experience here living in the Florentine Hills, and there's literally zero uh, Web3 movement around me, as far as I can tell. But time will tell. Hopefully we're thrilled if that's indeed the case. Uh, in terms of how I got to, to it, mm, so yeah, as Emil also mentioned, um, I worked for this great, wonderful um, decentralized payments uh, infrastructure provider called Radom last year. Um, and there, are, as I said, I, I just saw so many inefficient, inefficient, in, um, inefficiencies, right, in terms of how we find each other for business, for partnerships, for funding. And um, last year, maybe it makes sense to mention, I had also privately a little bit of a tough year. Uh, I got some family members very close to me uh, getting ill and eventually passing away. Um, and you might wonder why she mentioned that. Well, because I kind of like had a mental breakdown <laughs> to an extent. This space was downloaded via spacesdown.com. Visit to download your spaces today. Uh, and I really thought, okay, I really want to build something, right? Something that lasts. How can I help people even beyond the wonderful work that I'm doing at Radom? And yeah, I joined an incubator, a lovely one uh, here in Europe from the Blockchain Founders Group. And after time, I started to think more and more and more. And the idea for Thrill just popped up one day in my head. And that's how it really, really started. And I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if we can just help people in the Web3 space 
uh, globally, right? If even one project already managed to find funding through our platform or one investor finds a wonderful project or there's a great person finding a new job or a freelancer finding a new gig through Thrill, then my mission is already accomplished. Mm, so yeah, that is kind of what happened here in terms of where Thrill grew from. And of course, there were also a couple of frustrations coming together. For instance, indeed, this whole networking at conferences, it's really wonderful to find people, but it's really, really tough usually to recognize who they are um, unless you are staring at people's nameplate and it's even written uh, which kind of category they belong to if you want to categorize or label people, right? Um, the same goes for those app that are, apps that are readily existing for uh, conferences. Uh, not to say that it is happening anywhere or everywhere per se, sorry, everywhere, um, but I recently attended a conference in Italy, um, a Web3 and blockchain conference as well. And guess what? Two weeks later, I got an email from the organizers whether or not I wanted to buy a huge list with all the contact details, with all the information of the people that were attending. So what I mean to say here, it doesn't always have to be, but if you provide consent, for the downloading of an app, right? And I say that also as a lawyer, you never know what happens with the data you provide. It can be sold, it can be used, right? By bad actors. And again, also that is so contrary to the nature of Web3. And it goes, in my opinion, also against fundamental standards of privacy and, and human rights, even <laughs> I say as a, as a lawyer here. So that, yeah, th those are all frustrations that's come together and thrilled. Uh, again, a kind of a Web2.5 solution but then an ethical one um, without intermediaries, gatekeepers, commissions that is streamlined and efficient. And uh, yeah, you, you hear I will just keep rambling on, but <laughs> it's just the culmination of uh, opportunities that I've seen being missed and really the creation of opportunity and the breaking down of access barriers for people globally that I'm envisioning here. I hope that's not too abstract. <laughs> Yeah, and just to add to that, you know, if if we talk about those inefficiencies that you mentioned, Alexandra, uh, maybe not everybody in the audience has has had the chance to go to any of those conferences. So, you know, I can share from my experience how I do things. For example, how I prepare for conferences. So, first of all, you know, you have to obviously go to the website of the conference to really filter out who is going to be there. Uh, and sometimes, uh, you know, it goes from conference to conference within different web pages they have. Uh, you know, a lot of speakers listed, for example, a lot of teams. So you really have to check out every logo, every team, every team member, um, and really make a short list of people you want to find and connect with. So that's one thing. Uh, it takes a humongous amount of time. Also, uh, you know, if we, if we do talk, uh, if we do end up talking to them, then you obviously can, get to, get, can tap into their network but also the Telegram chats uh, of, of any event, let's say you know, the big one is coming, you know, Token 2049. When the event starts, we have a huge amount of chats there, a huge amount of messages getting sent each second. So yes, there are quite a few valuable contacts there, but you really have to dig deep into, into the chat and always be updated. And, and you just can't miss um, some important messages and, and it takes you know, constant effort for, for me to filter out who's typing, uh, which project are they with. Then I have to check out the website uh, of that project to see is that somebody, you know, that makes sense to talk to. So, you know, to properly prepare for a crypto conference is, is a huge effort. And, and I believe that, a, you know, one stop shop app that allows for me personally to skip all this and really just filter, uh, and click a few buttons and find people that are relevant to me is going to be really important to everybody that's, that's you know, working in Web3 and even outside of that. And, you know, what that means for us as a business is obviously more contacts, more, uh, you know, better time spent uh, and, and just better contacts in general because um, time is, is really important, especially because at those conferences, it, don't last for a week or two usually it's just a few days while you're there you want to really get the max out of the time you you get because at the end of the day uh you know team is expecting the results from you so uh by saving that humongous amount of time uh it's it's a huge value out to anybody who's building in web3 and especially creating their networks in so yeah i hope that 
kind of give some good light on, on how people do things and what's currently missing when it comes to really networking in, in the space. Yeah, no, like uh, my experience from the few crypto events I've been to was um, you'd go on to like you'd go on to the Discord or something if I set up um, like a like NFT LA, I went to set up a Discord. You go on there, you try to network with people, you try to set up different like satellite events around the area. And it's like you're going through all this process, but the more you kind of when you refer to it as Tinder, it kind of makes sense to me, you know, that you want to just go if you're going to a crypto event, a web free event in a different area, you want to just be able to connect to different people you know in that area. You don't wanna have to jump through all these different hoops and verify who's who, right? So that makes a lot of sense to me as a description, really. Um, just one other question I had was, um, I- I'm guessing in the development of this app that you've probably talked to a lot of different, say, VCs, angels, web free projects. What, what's the reception you've had from most of them? Do they... Do they see the same value in this project that you do? Oh, that's a wonderful question, actually. And I'm, I'm going to say, no, not always. Um, it's true. I spoke, especially in the beginning, for Product Market Fit with a lot of VCs and angels as well. Now I'm going to be <laughs> not super careful here with, and I'm, and I'm Dutch, so I'm going to be very direct here. There's a bunch of actually investors out there, professional investors that, as you already said before, for probably obvious reasons, are very reliant, right, on personal referrals and warm introductions. And where that is the case, um, they don't always see the value uh, of actively going out there and actively scoping out new opportunities, right? A lot of these established players, whether they are more famous VCs or less famous VCs, especially, of course, in a bear market, They get dozens of decks in their inbox, right? In their email, they get approached constantly on Telegram or LinkedIn or wherever they are. So they're kind of like, yeah, why would I even need this? And then I'm trying to explain to them, but of course they don't always care to listen because that must be said as well, uh, that I think that there is a huge opportunity uh, missed out on, right? If you look at the investments being done by by big investors out there, still 80, 90, sometimes 70%, depending on the studies that you're looking at, of those projects still fails, right? A lot of startups fail. So basically I'm saying you have this great methodology in place. Apparently you're very happy with the outcome and with the current status quo, but still 80 or 90% of your investments go wrong. Do you really think that at least you cannot put a little bit of more effort to go actually proactively out there? And people tend to be not so nice, you know, when I lecture them to an extent. And that's, of course, you know, not, not kind of like the most pleasant thing to hear. So certain, let's call them more old fashioned investors don't like that. Then on the other hand, we also have more proactive, more young, right? VCs and investors, especially those that are looking at specific verticals or really have a more specific investment thesis that are actually actively, you know, you know, joining uh, discords, uh, joining, um, you know, specific conferences that are actively putting themselves out there, uh, which I think is a lot more brave because it shows proactivity and it shows really that you are, yeah, uh, more of a risk taker. And I actually really appreciate that. Um, So just in sum, with regards to investors, there's kind of like a huge split between those that are more proactive, I would say even more young and more willing to take risk and those that are risk averse, um, that probably more present kind of traditional finance and how business was being done in the in the in the old fashioned kind of way. And I think that is not sustainable for the future, especially if we see business and Web3 expanding globally, and more and more stuff happening. In my opinion, you should be proactive. Um, Yeah. That's my answer. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. I think um, it's it's kind of a different breed of investor, isn't it, to the traditional when you come to a web free investor. I mean, I've uh, I've been down that road myself. We've invested in. I think you had this golden period of ICOs back in maybe twenty twenty one, where it was just seen as every ICO you invest in makes you money. Um, but it's. Uh, it's obviously a little bit of a different landscape we're getting into when we're looking at what frills involved in. We're looking at more equity, more 
um, angels and VCs as opposed to retail. Mm -hmm. But we've mentioned already that um, it's, it doesn't sound like it's your first time starting a new business venture, for example. So I just wanted to ask you, like, what what was the experience in sort of starting a new venture in Web3 as opposed to maybe starting something like in the hospitality sector, as you mentioned, you've worked in before? Have you experienced like more challenges in Web3? Have you found that it's easier? Like, what's your experience overall? Oh, thank you. I'm um, I'm very happy with that compliment that apparently I sound like a very experienced entrepreneur. I, I have to tell you honestly that in tech, this is my first enterprise. Um, I've been indeed like running some bars and restaurants in both the Netherlands and Italy. Um, but in terms of tech, yeah, it, it's like a whole different ballgame. Things that I've encountered in terms of challenges, yeah, you know, they really confirm <laughs> to me why we need Web3. Uh, massive bureaucracy. Uh, for instance, um, I live in Italy, but I chose to incorporate my company in the Netherlands. Um, well, I even have a little bit of a, as I said, a legal background, but it was so difficult to find everything out in terms of, you know, tax rules, in terms of, um, you know, how to even incorporate, how to do shares internationally. It was like a massive thing in terms of time. Um, also, I mean, this sounds stupid, but even opening a bank account in the Netherlands, I mean, I wish I, sh I wouldn't have had to do that. But unfortunately, we do need, need also more old fashioned bank accounts, especially, you know, since we've been raising some capital. It just took me two months to find a bank that even wanted to work with us because we had the words Web3 crypto and blockchain um, on our website and in our documentation. And I mean, it's again like huge inefficiencies out there, and I'm not I'm not the only one, right? A lot of people actually web three pure native web three projects. They're even in a worse position than that I am. Uh, so that is with regards to more procedural things, and mm, in terms of more substantial things, of course, uh, something I've encountered, and that's also reasonable to say, is uh, how the hell can you build and set up a tech platform if you cannot code yourself? Uh, this is an, an argument that I've heard quite often, especially from bigger VCs. They just don't get it. Um, and here, basically, what I just want to say is that, I mean, you don't necessarily have to be able to code to have a vision and to understand what you want to build. It's the same, in my opinion, with running a restaurant and having a great chef in your kitchen, but you're not able to cook yourself. Still, you can build and run a wonderful place. Uh, the same goes, I think, I, for instance, for a football coach, right? Take someone like Le Louis van Gaal from the Netherlands, who has quite a nice track record. Uh, but he was never a great player. Or some argue even that he didn't play at all very well. Uh, of course, there are like kind of analogies. But those are, mm, yeah, sometimes arguments that I've encountered. And it's fine. We'll prove them wrong. We have a great team. Uh, Dutch, German, couple of volunteers now joining the project internationally, wonderful, clever and young and innovative people. Um, so in that regard, yeah, there are some challenges sometimes, um, but I would say uh, most, most of all the, the bureaucratic part of things. Uh, it just shows again why we need Web3. All these intermediaries, slow people replying, oh my gosh. Mm, but hey, uh, that's only today, right? Uh, hopefully uh, in a couple of years, that will be all different. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, fortunately, we've got some talented guys who can code on our team and we, as you say, rely on them. If it if it came down to me, if it came down to many of us in like the community marketing team, we'd be screwed. But yeah, you, do, you don't need to do everything yourself, right? Uh, no, I guess so. It's, it's often indeed, as you said, it's teamwork, right? Um, and especially there where teams are coming together in Web3, it's all about collaboration and uh, combining skills into something greater, right? That the community, that the individual members couldn't do by themselves. It's all about, yeah, combining these different skills into something bigger and better and greater. And I think you, your company is just an excellent example of that yourself. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, if, it was, uh, if it was built on me, we would have nothing at all. But I just wanted to ask you um, a little bit about your funding model. 
before we ended. So you've mentioned before that uh, your apps, well, actually, before we go on to that, I should mention, first of all, the app launch, right? So your app is launching in September. I think that's right. Yeah, that is correct. Second week of September. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, awesome. So the funding model for that, you've described that's free and open for anyone who wants to use it. Right. So what's um how do you plan to fund trilled in the future what's how will you monetize that going forward yeah that is of course the fundamental question here right um in terms of building the platform i was quite luckily uh to find some great investors uh and great supporters um but of course long term that is not sustainable so what i really want to do here is keep the platform open uh and free and open access again uh, for always. I'm not going to actually impose all these barriers and all these um, yeah, fundamental high costs that we're seeing today that characterize the business space to an extent. I'm also not going to take commissions. So people are just mutually going to find each other, um, you know, in terms of a mutual match, um, consensual match. People are going to chat, but it's completely up to them uh, if they're going to get married or if they just, you know, <laughs> uh, jump off the platform without doing anything together. And even if it gets to business, which is absolutely wonderful. And of course, we hope that we don't take commissions or cut out of the deal. No, we're not an intermediary. What we are going to do actually is just impose kind of, mm, or try to impose a couple of monetizing features. For instance, um, in terms of conferences, right, we're going to build even a better semi white label solution that we're going to uh, charge conferences for to a little extent already from next year. Again, that has nothing to do with the users. Um, then we have a couple of premium features that you can buy, right, that you can get yourself, um, you know, a tiny little bit boosted by the, by the algorithm, actually. But again, only to those that are actually looking for you. We have special signals that you can that you can um purchase and what is really interesting here is that if you decide to pr purchase anything right you can also pay with crypto uh without on or off ramping uh just through an integrated solution and again the prices they won't go out of the roof they're like reasonable um but again that's all optional uh, i fundamentally think that the best thing to do right now is build a proper business platform and then over time we will you know uh look for some additional monetizing uh solutions uh, I would prefer to exclude referrals because, again, that kind of undermines our neutrality. Uh, I would also try to exclude, I really aim for this, invasive ads. Uh, if perhaps in the future here and there we put an ad, we always write that it's an ad, right? I really want this platform to be, yeah, ethically okay. Uh, we're not selling people's data. Um, you know, all these types of things won't happen. So what I really expect, and I also tell that to my investors, I don't think that we will go 10 times uh, up, right? Uh, tomorrow or next year. You don't have to expect to have a 10 backer immediately, but I really want us to grow into, yeah, this really to go platform. And then we'll see how we will start monetizing even further in a more uh, ethical way. But we have differing, um, yeah, methodologies uh, for that already thought out. Right. Well, I, I appreciate your um, your commitment to that, and it's. I think the kind of um, the thing people need to bear in mind is right that it's it's a bit like Twitter, right? People complained when Elon Musk took over, and you started to get Twitter blue and all of these sort of things. But people need to bear in mind that if you are not paying for a service at all, then you are you're the product, right? So. It's, it, I think it's great to have the free and open service, but it, it, there's always going to be some form of monetization or the user is going to be the product of it at the end of the day. So I think it's great that you're being so well, sort of free and open with um, how you plan to proceed with that. Um, I just had a couple more questions for you and then I had one or two community questions okay. before we finish. Mm -hmm. um, so... Like I know you've you've shown me some previews of the app already. It's looking really good. So that's that's open in September. It's what was it? What was the exact date? Or do we have an exact uh, launch yeah, date? We, or was <laughs> I've been kind uh, of it's, it's kind here, of like uh, up week, in the air. Yeah, second week of September, but uh, yeah, I aim for maximum September tenth, perhaps slightly earlier. But uh, we already have a big first conference actually using us in the beginning of October. So I really need to get out there as soon as possible. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I know how development goes. It's So we're aiming for mid-September, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. So hopefully mid-September, <laughs> late September, people will be able to access your app. And if people want to follow you, stay up to date with the developments from Frilled, what's, what's the best place for them to do that? Is that on Twitter? Is that on LinkedIn, your website? Um, well, I would say yes on LinkedIn. Uh, as everyone has noticed, <laughs> I'm not really a big Twitterer. Um, but so LinkedIn would be better. Uh, but I should also mention, like, if anyone um, perhaps is enthusiastic, right, to talk synergies, I say in the old-fashioned kind of manner, maybe you want to partner up or maybe you run a wonderful event or, yeah, maybe you need even, I don't know, input or an extra pair of eyes on your deck, feel free to always reach out to me um, through Alexandra at uh, thrilledlabs.io. Uh, and I will always try to, to reply to you as, as far as, you know, as fast as, as possible. Really, I'm always happy to talk and uh, engage with other people that are arguably more clever than that I am. That's uh, t- too humble, too humble by far. <laughs> it's uh, just one last, one last question I have for you then before I close things up, because I know we're uh, probably well over where, or our allocated time already. But I wanted to ask, there was a community question, is Thrilled Plan to launch a token? So you mentioned you're obviously like a web 2.5 platform. Would you consider going full web 3.0 and just launch a token? Uh, Full, not immediately, no. But I'm actually really uh, actively scoping out opportunities to make our platform more web 3. Um, You know, always in line with, of course, the, the purpose of the platform. So I would never just include some sort of token without any utility whatsoever. Uh, but what I can, for instance, imagine are certain, you know, membership NFTs and, and the, these types of things. So our own token, no, we won't have that. Um, no, not for the not for the near future. But if anyone has any great suggestions in terms of other Web3 uh, kind of functionalities, always let me know. I'm really happy to 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 uh, uncover that beyond, of course, um, the very crypto payments that we already have, will allow for without on or off ramping, which I think is already pretty cool in terms of uh, inclusion and bridging the gap between Web 2 and Web 3. But that's just a start. Absolutely, yeah. Um, well, this community is always happy to provide ideas. I know I, I get many of them. <laughs> so uh, we'll see. But uh, yeah, t- it's it's been great hearing from you about everything that Trill's up to. It sounds like you might be, you might have just hit on a, something that's really needed in the space. So I'll be keenly watching what you guys are up to. Um, is there any last news or thoughts or anything that you want to share before we go? Oh, any last words? Um, well, I mean, perhaps it would be, again, um, just a request to you know, everyone in the community, if you are even running an accelerator or a grant program, or maybe you're running a hackathon or um, anything else that you would like to share with Thrilled, um, please let me know. And why am I saying that? Because we have a special part of the app um, where we will showcase, um, you know, great community initiatives, where we will showcase um, like set types, types of initiatives, right, that are really of use to the very people that are on Thrilled. And in that regard, I just really want to help spread also other companies. Um, yeah, they're great initiatives. So if anyone has anything that they would like to see on Thrilled, and you know, of course we're not huge yet, but hopefully we're going to be a really big and comprehensive platform. Let me know we have already great other partnerships and grant programs and accelerators on there. and. Uh, of course, we will do some due diligence, but um, yeah, we're really looking forward to to work on um, yeah with great partners out there and with great other people that really care about bringing Web three forward. So that is something, just a request from my side. Absolutely. Well, I think you guys, you know, it's early days, but I think you'll be huge in time. You know, so I'll be keenly yeah. watching what you guys are up to. <laughs> and you know, just add to that, I probably. I have a feeling that, you know, some people out of Parsec's community are wondering what's in it for Parsec. So I kind of want to jump the gun a little bit and 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 tell, uh, you know, how, how Parsec can benefit from, from all this. So first of all, obviously, it's, it's joining uh, Thrilled as a partner. I know we'll be featured on, you know, the partners network on the app will be heavily visible. Uh, the app is going to showcase us as, as one of the 
partners of Thrill Labs. And if, let's say, you know, Thrill becomes the go-to solution for people to network in Web3 and conferences and to connect, um, that means a lot of new eyes on the project as well. And I frankly, honestly believe uh, Thrill can do that really easily with what it has in store and how you know, it's shaping up. So uh, that means a lot of new eyes uh, and new visibility. Even you know, a good example can be a post by Alexandra LinkedIn uh, advertising the, the spaces. Uh, we already got new eyes on the project, people asking, uh, to connect with us. So um, it's it's always good to have a good network, especially in Web3 and even more especially in, in, in bear market. So, uh, you know, this is it's a mutual synergy that's not about financials, but all about the friendliness, the networks that we can tap into on each other's half. Uh, for example, Alexander was kind enough to make our way to Blockchain Founders Group, which is a valuable partner of ours as well. We have a joint partner, a common partner, which we work with on a continuous basis. And this relationship has yielded some good results already. So, so yeah, uh, you know, this is a mutual synergy and we're happy to, to be in touch to, to join forces and, you know, help each other uh, along the path. So, so yeah, that's my two cents I want to share on the topic. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a great point to make. Thanks for, for making that, Amelia. Yeah, it's a, it's it's very much a mutual synergy. We are going to be fe- featured on the Thrilled app when it launches, and um, I think this is why we got involved in the first place because we see huge benefits for us as a project. So it's it's a no brainer, really. Uh, but I'm like I say, I'm going to be watching what you guys are up to with keen eyes. It's I'm really cheering for you guys. It's, it seems really promising. Um, if you do ever, you know, I know you say you don't want to, but if you do ever decide to launch a token, let me know. I'll be, I'll be your first buyer. Oh. So there you go. Mm. That is so kind, both of you. That is absolutely wonderful. And, you know, this is, this is just wonderful, this type of trust, you know, because that is perhaps the last thing to say. Web3 is so open and transparent and it's all about peer-to-peer, you know, connections. And, but still, trust is still so so important and it's so important for moving forward and yeah we really appreciate that we have your trust and we'll make sure to build something great together now i sound a little bit like donald trump but uh, anything we will we will build something great together i'm sure about that and yeah thanks for your trust it's it's so appreciated really thanks guys <laughs> make make fraud great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. Well, I hope it goes smoothly. Um, and I will. I'm sure we'll be hearing from you guys very soon. So, thanks to everyone who tuned in, and we will see you all next time. Take care, guys. Thanks. Let's talk parsing.